Have you ever read a smug comment on Reddit or watched someone on YouTube say they made tons of currency farming Uberlab and thought to yourself, I don't hate the lab as much as everyone else on Reddit. I could do that. We're gonna cover everything you need to know to get started in running the Uberlab, including builds, what bases you should have on hand to enchant, and how much currency you can expect to make starting out. So make sure you stick around for that. My name is Schwingy, let's get started. First things first. We need to talk about your build. While there are some great builds specialized around lab farming, and we'll get to them in a sec, I don't actually believe that you need a specific lab farming build to make running the lab enjoyable and worth doing. Here are some things your build should have going for it. Movement speed and maneuverability is king. Whether it's using a gimmick like Queen of the Forest and evasion stacking, or just using movement skills that feel good and can go through traps quickly, it's especially important that your character is quick. Trudging through the lab with 20% movement speed boots is not going to be fun, and you're going to want to quit before you even reach his arrow. Good life or energy shield recovery. No matter what you do, you're going to get hit by some traps, and you need to have some way of 1. Surviving the hit, and 2. Getting your health back up so that you can take another hit. Life regen from the tree or on gear and some staunching life flasks is often enough for the recovery aspect, and armor, as far as I know, is the best way to mitigate the damage. This is because traps deal physical damage, so having the physical damage reduction that armor provides is exactly what we need. Decent single target damage. Unlike your typical budget mapping build, having a build with good clear speed is completely irrelevant when it comes to farming the lab. What matters most is how quickly you can face and kill his arrow. Personally, I felt pretty comfortable fighting him with 250,000 DPS with my Ancestral Warchief Champion, and recommend having a similar amount in your builds. If you're playing a skill that needs to be up close and personal to hit him, then a higher DPS will feel a lot better. And if your build can one-shot each phase of his arrow, then you're going to be feeling pretty amazing doing this. My recommendation? If you're looking to start a new character for the purpose of farming lab, then you can't go wrong with this super budget Ancestral Warchief Champion build I mentioned. It averages 5-7 to seven minute lab runs even on days with bad layouts, and I've got a quick 2 minute build video for it right up here. If you already have a decent chunk of currency saved up and really want to push your lab running to the limit, then consider one of Mr. Khan's builds. This jingles for Mr. Khan. You'll find a link to his video in the description below, but do me a solid and finish watching this video first. Not many people talk about the importance of base when it comes to making profits in the lab, and because I think it's probably the most important thing, we're gonna fix that. Just like placing a sandwich in a bowl or pouring some cereal on a plate, getting a good enchant and putting it on a helmet that people don't want simply isn't going to work. You definitely could do it, you can do it. but like, why? There are three basic helmets that you've got to have on hand the first two times you're going through the lap. What makes them good is their affordability at 1-2 to two chaos each. You'll want to have a lion pelt, a royal burgonet, and a hubris circlet, all at least item level 84. The lion pelt will pair well with most dexterity based attack enchants, the burgonet pairs well with melee and physical enchants, and the hubris circlet pairs well with most spell enchants. These are loose pairings and you'll definitely want to do your own research before committing an enchant onto the wrong base. Once you've sold a couple of helmets with decent enchants, it's time to invest into a wider collection of bases. Start buying up high item level bone helmets for minion enchants, and some popular unique helmets like the Voto's Devotion, Crown of the Inward Eye, Indigon, Memory Vault, Fractal Thoughts, and so on. Now also wouldn't be a bad time to buy some boots for those times when the Divine Fawn is being particularly cruel. Before you know it, you'll have a whole collection of bases to choose from when you're selecting your enchants. Just remember to keep restocking whenever you put a winner up for sale. If you're already familiar with the modern lab and the various tiers of enchanted offerings to the goddess, then it should come as no surprise that if your build can handle doing the gifts to the goddess, then that will be the most profitable labbing you can do. However, this video assumes that you're not already in that position, so everything I've said so far is in relation to the classic offering to the goddess. And yes, before anyone asks, I traded for them in bulk, but eventually they seem to self-sustain through the chests in the treasure room. Also yes, I do buy twice enchanted prophecies so that each run gives us two enchants instead of just one. When you're first starting out and don't have the extra currency to buy the prophecies, that's okay. Just running the offerings will do. Okay, so unfortunately, I haven't prepared any fancy spreadsheet detailing how much profit I've been making per hour. That's on me, but also, I want to stress just how casual I've been about it all. Creating videos like this one takes me a lot of non-gameplay time, but I have been able to leave the game running while sitting in my hideout for the occasional trade here and there. Here are the facts. My average lab run, including the time it takes me to research which helm enchant is best, takes about 7 to 8 minutes. I don't think I've done more than 50 lab runs in total since I started the league. Let's say 55 to be safe. 
I have 11 exalts in my stash, and I've bought some upgrades for a few exalts, not to mention all of the bases I've collected that are still waiting for the one. Let's say 15x profit, on the low end. So then, with some we can average roughly 1.5 exalts per hour. Are these amazing returns? To a POE veteran, probably not, but to a more casual player, hopefully this is encouraging considering how easy it is. That said, farming the lab has been really chill and the more I do it, and the faster I make my character, the more profit I'll be making. If you're a Chad gamer that has a bunch of time to play each day, you'll easily double my profits per hour just for having been online longer than me. And that's it! I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a like if you found it helpful. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. If you're looking for a cheap build to play for the lab, then watch this!